happen. Initially, we saw Daisy looking for the perfect dress for her event. Unfortunately, when she went to the store, the dress she was looking for was not her size. This shows some of the big disadvantages of traditional shopping. The shop is a physical location demanding travel. There is simply not enough shelf space and also due to a higher inventory cost, there is a limited number of items in stock. In 1995, the market was shaken up by the entrance of online shops such as Amazon. In their first week, their order amount was $12,000 and nowadays they ship 35 orders per second. This means Amazon has been shipping 2,500 orders since the start of this video. And all those orders add up to a stunning 136 billion in sales on a yearly basis. Amazon started as a professional in the book market, but nowadays their extended market expanded to offer all kinds of products. A key point of Amazon's business model thus lies in their variety, low price margin and high volume. Another important part is the high speed of their delivery. Also, their website navigates a customer directly to the point of purchase. Induce additional product related purchases and personalize their offer to the taste of each customer. So physical stores are local, online stores are global. Let's look at the customer's considerations before shopping online. The first factor is measured by the breadth of the product selection. Secondly, the quality of information provided and the possibility to directly compare products are very important for a customer to place an order. The digital storefront design of virtual stores is the equivalent of physical planning for retail stores and the user interface design for any software development. As the company and the customer only get in touch online, the service provided becomes of even greater importance. Received service quality is defined as the distinction of what customers expect and what customers receive. In order to gain customer's trust, stores should be concerned with privacy and careful data storage. The footwear and clothing category was hardly present in e-commerce catalogs because of people's preference to physically feel and try the clothing item. However, recently this trend has been taking a sharp turn. Mall-based department stores have started transferring parts of their inventory items to pure play businesses, just like Amazon. With the current acceleration, the online apparel sales will grow to 25% by 2020, twice as much as they were in 2015. Now let's take a quick look at how the anatomy of the long tail theory explains the disruption of the traditional clothing industry. Producers are searching for ways to reach a larger customer base at a lower cost. Additionally, they try to tailor their offered products to the customer's taste. Online sales achieve both. Producers and retailers are on the supply side. The supply side drivers for change and disruption are cost effectiveness, caused by the abundance of virtual shelf space, electronic delivery and made-to-order production. Due to this low cost, producers are able to offer their customers a very broad selection of products in comparison to offline retailers to the benefit of customers. Another benefit of online apparel stores is the large customer base. While consumers are on the demand side, they benefit from demand side drivers such as active search and sampling tools, passive recommendation systems, customer reviews and online communities which are a direct and accessible source of feedback for a product. In order to fully understand the disruption, it is important to understand why there was actually a possibility for this market to be disrupted. And we will do so by using the theory of the newly vulnerable markets. Firstly, we saw a market that was newly easy to enter because of the introduction of internet. This came with factors such as major cost advantages and lower barriers to entry. Secondly, the market was attractive to attack as new entrants could easily offer a big assortment and reach a much bigger customer base than possible with physical stores. Also, the margins were attractive as the physical stores had to get a high margin to cover for the fixed cost that are less present in the online environment. Finally, the market of physical stores was also difficult to defend because of the higher fixed cost that I mentioned before. This caused physical stores to be less able to offer a competitive price. Additionally, the online shops could carry a much broader assortment, causing the physical shops to be less able to satisfy specific customer demand. Now let's have a quick look at the swap analysis to have a better understanding of the online apparel market before jumping to judgment and predictions. As strengths, one can identify variety, search and advisory tools, and personalized offers. Some weaknesses are trust and credibility issues and no physical contact with the product. The opportunities are satisfaction of niche taste and a global customer base. The threats consist of imitation and copying of the business model. We would also like to look at a Porter's Five Forces analysis in order to evaluate how attractive the online apparel industry is 
and to make predictions about its future performance. The threat of new entrants is high. For a clothing business, online stores have become a necessity rather than a luxury feature. So, more players will be entering the online apparel industry, which at the same time has low barriers to entry. There are no patents or limiting requirements, and know-how for such platforms is readily available. The bargaining power of suppliers is a low force, because of cheap labor and low switching costs. The bargaining power of buyers is rather powerful, because switching between players involves no cost at all. The threat of substitution is high, because there are many players offering substitute products. Thus, customers have a high incentive to switch in case of price increases. The final force is the competitive rivalry. This force is high because of the high number of players, low switching costs and low barriers to entry. This has a negative effect on individual profitability within the industry. Let's go forward and jump into the future. As more and more brick and mortar businesses will be prompt to sell online in this competitive and rival industry, soon the market will be floated, leaving some of the weaker players behind. The ones likely to remain are the players with the best know-how, most solid connection with their customers and cutting-edge virtual reality for probing clothes and personalized suggestions. In a future Red Sea strategical situation in the online apparel industry, a player would need smart implementation of high-level augmented reality and targeted personalization to each customer to stand out. With the rapid development of technology, you might see some virtual clothing stores where fitting of clothes will be possible from your own room virtually. And those clothes are likely to be suggested based on one's color, fabric and silhouette preferences. Hang on, we're almost there. When most clothing stores have prominent presence online, they would need a differentiator in order not to be kicked out of the market. In a digital era, success will happen to those who provide personalized, emotional and visceral experience, not just technological convenience. In a world where almost every action will be tied to a technological algorithm, people will highly value experience that engage their bodies, their minds and their souls. And for retailers, don't just aim for online sales, aim for visceral and memorable experience.